Welcome back to the bench. Oh yeah, another amp module. PAM 8610 2x10 watt Class D audio amplifier board. This is a little bit different from the other ones that I have reviewed so far. What is the big deal? It's nicely packed in bubble wrap. Bought it at Parts Express for $12, which means you'll probably find it on eBay or, you know, one of the places that sell these things for less. Well, look at this little board. It has its own onboard volume control and its own power connector and an input jack so there's no screw down terminals or anything to worry about they do give you these uh, connectors for the output let's see here a set of connectors so you can connect them to your speakers and I will hook this up and we will do a test but let's first take a quick look at the board get the camera to focus here closely and you can see that it's a filterless design so in order to get a power measurement I'm going to have to use filter chokes and capacitors but oh well got to do what you got to do there is no heat sink on this I mean there is some heat dissipated into the board here you can see all the little vias there but it is a very small chip it's not going to dissipate a lot of heat so you're going to want to connect this to 8 ohm speakers don't use it with 4 ohms There's, it's just you know I can just tell by looking at it that it will get very hot in fact the data sheet even says so if you're going to have to have a heat sink if you're going to use it with 4 ohms and uh, the way it's laid out here see these components are taller than the chip itself it'd be very difficult to get a heat sink on there so I would strongly encourage not using 4 ohm loads okay Let's hook the thing up and give it a listen. Okay, it's all set up. Having those connectors sure did make it easy. And I jumpered the supplied cables over to the speaker wires with the breadboard here. And have the music player set up. And we'll give a quick listen. Sounds pretty good to me. Some people comment, ask me, why do I bother playing a music sample? Because you can't really tell through YouTube. Well, that's true. I mean, you got, you know, what really colors the sound? Well, first you got the speaker quality, room acoustics, the uh, quality of this camera, which is probably what hinders it the most. And, of course, the camera compresses it into a file, then I take it and render it on a video editor, upload to YouTube, and it gets, you know, converted again. And then, of course, you play it through your computer amplifier and your headphones or speakers. So, yeah, there's a lot of conversion going on. But, you know something, if I didn't play a sample, everyone would complain. So yeah, I just throw the sample in there, but yeah, I'm aware it doesn't really um, communicate the quality of the sound the amplifier gives. But using my own ears, it sounds very clean and good. One thing I do notice, 
I don't know if you can hear it. There's a lot of background noise, but it does have some hiss. I noticed that a lot with some of these Class D boards. They do have some hiss, some more than others. It's not awful or anything. I mean, when you're playing music, there's no way you, you could hear it. But it is there. It is more than, you know, like the Ellen 1875 kit. You know, this thing is dead silent. So, yeah, that's one little issue is some hit background hiss. Okay, let's move on to the power test. It is a filterless design, so I'm going to have to monkey around with setting up a filter so I can get a sine wave on the scope. I noticed something that is completely weird. Of course this is, like I said, it's a filterless design so I'm going to have to set up a filter. I got it hooked up to the scope. Resistor to the other channel as well. But this thing is playing through my TV amplifier. It's distorted. See, I have this little amplifier on the back of my TV here. So I get good sound instead of the you know, little crappy speakers inside. But that is, that is weird. It's emitting enough signal to be picked up by that amplifier. It must be radiating some RF and that amplifier over there is picking it up. That is completely weird. Never seen that before. Okay, well, on to the power test. Okay, power test. One kilohertz sine wave, both channels driven, eight ohm loads. One thing I notice, this volume control has discrete steps. See that? It said somewhere in the data sheet that it is a DC type volume control that uses discrete steps. So I'm just gonna have to set it as good as I can. See, it's clipping there, not there. So we're getting 8.26 volts. I'll turn that down because that little chip gets really hot. Okay, what did I say? 8.28 squared divided by 8. And around 8.5 watts per channel of clean undistorted power. And, of course, that's at 8 ohm loads. And that's about what I would expect. I'm using this power supply here. And at measured power, it puts out 14 volts. So, yeah, at 14 volts, it's doing exactly what I would expect. Okay, I'm going to get a few more measurements before I come back. I already got some of the measurements previously so I'll go ahead and finish up this video minimum voltage I'll say 6 volts it started to cut out around 5.7 so 6 is a good number of course at that level you're not going to get a lot of power well the nice thing is because it operates so low it would work great at 9 volts and because the currents a lot less at that level you can use it with 4 ohm loads just don't use 4 ohm loads at any higher voltage. I'm going to guess you'll get 5 or 6 watts at 9 volts, 4 ohm loads. You know, that's per channel. It wouldn't be any less than 5, I wouldn't think. So, you know, keep that in mind if you want to use this amplifier. The quiescent current, in other words, the idle current at 12.6 volts, is only 20 milliamps. That is excellent. Great for battery use. And of course, like we said before, we got 8.5 watts, 8 ohms with 14 volt supply. Clean power, both channels driven. So is it a good amp? 
I am actually impressed with this thing. It is very small. It has power connector, input jack. There's your output connectors, and they give you the little wires. It has a little nut here so you can mount it in a case. Holes so you can mount it to the bottom of the case. Just don't let it hang by the control here because it is, you know, it has these fine connectors so it does move a little bit. On the downside, I did notice that little bit of noise in the speaker. Like I said, I see that a lot in these amps, but it's nothing serious. If you have really efficient speakers, it might be an issue for you, so keep that in mind. Well, pretty nice little amp. I'd recommend it. Once again, thanks for watching. If you use it at that, you're not going to get a lot of output power because you need supply voltage to you know get the output power you, you know if you want decent output power oh god i just keep on going and going jeez